SpaceX Starship Updates and Crew Dragon In-Flight Abort Test Summary My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It and I just finished my 5 hour long livestream of the in-flight abort test and it was great. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates SpaceX right now is very busy with the next generation serial number 1 Starship. They've already started building different parts and recently started stacking rings. First, I want to show you that grey structure which recently got delivered to Boca Chica. In an earlier episode, I already talked about SpaceX's building plans for Boca Chica and there is one thing still missing from that original plan. The second windbreaker. And this new structure certainly looks just like that. SpaceX would need it to build either two prototypes simultaneously or a next generation Starship and Super Heavy. If SpaceX's main intent right now is to step up the build quality, they will need a semi-clean room environment and most importantly lots of wind protection, as Boca Chica can get very windy due to the location directly at the coastline. So here we go, windbreaker number 2 is under construction. And it's going up really fast too. The build was started a few days ago and it's already grown considerably large. The Starship project is growing larger and larger, very impressive to see. One more indicator for SpaceX opening up a second project is a second Onion 10 being built right now. SpaceX seems to double every building they have at the site. Same production line for two projects. A large manufacturing and construction tent, a smaller one for example for ring production or smaller assembly work and a large windbreaker to protect the construction process. So the real question right now might be if we're right now seeing the foundation for a second construction project. It's safe to say that SpaceX is not reducing their efforts in Boca Chica for sure. Next up we have the launch mount. Workers have disconnected the fuel lines. As the launch mount looks rather rudimentary and like a quick build, it's likely that SpaceX will start to do some improvement work on it rather soon if they want to launch anything from the site. I'll watch it closely for you. This might give us some good indication on the scale of the second generation starships. Flame diverter anyone? SpaceX has started the stacking. At least on a small scale the rings are being connected and transported into a construction area shielded by the container wall. So they are being worked on. This might just be what we've been waiting for for a long time now. The first segments of the serial number 2 hull. And more rings are already waiting next to the coiling machine. More and more segments are being constructed. The new nose cone seems done and ready for stacking as well. But this raises the question why SpaceX is building the nose cone so early. Another object might give some clues to that. This object has drawn a lot of attention late last week. Already at first glance it looks like a tank. A rather small one. The header tanks used for the Mark 1 nose section were quick build as SpaceX realized rather late that they would get center of mass issues if they installed the header tanks into the lower tank section as originally planned. The new plan was to put them into the nose. The sphere would be needed as a cone is a rather bad shape to hold pressure and the nose will get hot on re-entry. Now if you look at the tank, there's a segment missing. My theory and that of Don Jones, one of my patrons, is that the segment is missing so welders can work on the inside when attaching it to the nose cone. Then the tank will be completed with a piece including a pipe to lead into and through the second header tank which will be attached with a common dome which was Elon's original idea for the header tanks. Elon tweeted a picture of the construction as well. It has a rather poor resolution but it shows the rare views from close up. Here you have the LOX header tank, the nose cone and a nose cone construction jig in one picture. Now this is the point at which I personally abandoned the last chance for the old Mark 1 nose section. SpaceX obviously is constructing internals of a new nose section right now which gives the old one very slim chances of actually being used. The last straw would be that SpaceX might integrate new internals into the old nose section. The first test tank has by now been taken apart and removed from the launch mount. This closes the first chapter of serial number 1 testing in Boca Chica and opens up space for the next one, which in theory should be started rather soon as the first test tank left room for improvements. And Brownsville had another visitor from Florida. 
Go Discovery made the trip safely and arrived in Texas with more equipment from the Coco and presumably also the Roberts Road site at Kennedy Space Center. A bulkhead rig, another jig and some containers have been added to the Boca Chica inventory. Thanks go to Gene from S Padre for these beautiful shots. Show some love in the comments and go check out his channel, link is in the description. SpaceX is well into the next phase right now. We can see new buildings go up everywhere, parts are being constructed and tested and we can see the project grow right before our eyes. Thank you SpaceX for giving us this very unique viewing angle. Crew Dragon in flight aboard test summary. And here comes the next highlight. The Crew Dragon has attempted its final test before the program can move forward to send Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley towards the ISS. First set for January 18th, the test got delayed to January 19th after a rough sea in the recovery area would have prevented SpaceX recovery crews from a clean opportunity to recover the capsule and possibly the debris after touchdown. Short before the launch window opened, SpaceX announced that the test would have to be delayed by one day. This did not prevent the ground crew from doing their training. Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken trained ingress and egress operations and yet again got more familiar with the systems and operations. Then on January 19th everyone was in waiting position again on our live stream. There was a small delay again but at 10.30 am Eastern Standard Time SpaceX lit the candle and booster B1046 rose up to its final launch. And what can I say? The whole test was pretty much flawless. The booster had a normal trajectory past max Q at around 1 minute and 30 seconds, the crew dragon including the trunk were separated, the super dracos did their separation burn, then came the big moment for B1046. Farewell friend, it's been a good ride. If we dissect the footage a bit further, we can see that right after the separation you can see some white vapor come out of the booster. This most likely is a tank venting to depressurize the tanks. This actually might be part of the emergency procedure to possibly give the capsule more time to successfully escape from the rocket. After that you can see the booster tilt into the airstream. Its flight path pretty much immediately became unstable. Then the explosion occurred. Contrary to my initial observation on the stream this now very much looks like the booster did succumb to the aerodynamic forces. Scott Manley did an awesome analysis on it and found photographers who took pictures of the second stage falling through the sky. If SpaceX had pushed the button the second stage would have been destroyed as well as the self-destruct mechanism runs along the side of the whole rocket. After the booster had gone up in flames capsule and trunk rose up to the apogee, the trunk separated and shortly after the Draco thrusters reoriented the capsule for re-entry. The capsule then started its descent and at the right time deployed drogue and then main chutes. After that it was only a slow descent down into the Atlantic Ocean. This test as far as we can tell right now can be called a full success. Now NASA and SpaceX will start analyzing tons of data recorded while the test was going on. As soon as the analysis is done NASA will make the decision if the test passed all the set goals. If that's the case, NASA will then give the go for the demo mission 2 which will send Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken towards the ISS. While the analysis is going on SpaceX will have time to do a few more drop tests required to fully certify the Mark III parachute system. Nothing should now stand in the way for the final step. Demo mission 2 will most likely take place within the next 6 months. It's hard to tell when exactly but it's not long anymore and chances are good that SpaceX might actually be the first in the competition between Boeing and SpaceX. Last but not least I want to give a shout out to Spaceship Mania for sending me a very awesome gift. On the last episode quite a few had questions about my new addition to the set and I'm taking the time now to answer as many of them as I can. So this is it. Starship and Super Heavy in their latest design. Fully 3D printed and hand painted. All the details are there. Engines on both the Starship and the Super Heavy booster. Wonderfully modeled grid fins and you can even stack the two. Randy from Spaceship Mania sent me this gift for free to decorate my set so I'm not sponsored by him. This is just a shout out to him as I think the guy deserves some more attention. He does a really good job and he doesn't only make SpaceX models. He has a shop and the link is in the description. I have to warn you though the Starship model I got right now is out of stock. He's going to restock very soon though. 
So if you're interested in one, make sure to watch the shop, I'll put the link in the description, show him some love in the comments and definitely also check out his YouTube channel, You Rock. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will SpaceX build two starships simultaneously? As always, tell me in the comments. And we're at the patron shoutout again and this one's gonna be special for me. After the last livestream, your support was overwhelming. What about it gained so many new patrons that I'll have to read them from a list. I'm humbled and I'm honored and I want to know who all you are, so get onto the Discord and talk to me. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Don Stahl, Simon Philbin, Bob Sinkick, Pokemon Schnitzel, Bill Colbert, Celinda Sherdian, Andrew King and Thomas Ahrens and many more. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. <laughs> awesome! Project grow right before our eyes. <laughs> Viewing angle. Viewing angle. SpaceX is... <laughs> <laughs> Parts are being constructed and tested. <laughs> 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 <laughs>